Cisco Microsoft Privileged Access Workstation using Umbrella DNS and proxy layer protection to further secure those workstations. Okay, so we're gonna start off in Umbrella. We'll go ahead and add a DNS policy. And basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna focus on just adding DNS security categories. So you can see here's the base. We're gonna go ahead and hit next. We'll go ahead and find our devices. Now you may still not have rolled out the umbrella client yet to your assets, but um, let's assume we've got some that are, and then some I'll show you a little bit later how we'll quickly add that. Now go ahead and we're gonna create a new DNS security policy and we're gonna call that PAW, right? Privilege Access Workstation DNS Security. We'll go ahead and create that from scratch. We'll check off all of the security categories. So this is your first line of defense, right? So this is a nice added layer of protection um, that happens well before, you know, an HTTP or HTTPS connections established. We went ahead and added those integration elements as well, like SecureX. Now we're in content. And for content, we're gonna go ahead and create a new um, category list for ourselves. So it'll be PA content security. And we're not gonna select any categories because what we're gonna do is we're gonna leverage the proxy function to perform uh, the categorization blocking. Uh, and additional inspection that might be required. Now for applications, we're gonna do the same here. We're gonna create a new uh, setting, but we're actually not gonna change anything here. And this way, if we wanna modify things later, we can do that without disrupting a, a previously um, um, configured object. So we'll go ahead and create a couple uh, allow and uh, deny destination lists. And again, we're not doing anything here, but if we wanted to at the domain level, we can certainly add this. So we'll save this one and we'll create a, another one for block. And again, all you have to do is enter your domain or URL here and it would block at that DNS layer. Now we're just creating these objects and applying them to policy. So if we wanna make changes, we can do that. File analysis, we'll leave that on as okay. And then we've got our defaults here for block pages. We'll give this a name. And that's it for DNS. Okay, let's go ahead and move to web policy. We'll create a new one. And you can see these both these policies are right up at the top. Now here we can get into things like um, SAML and, and for user identity. I'm not doing that in this particular video. That's something that you can certainly do both at the DNS and the proxy level if you want user attribution and build policy based on user identity. In my case, I'm just gonna use it based on the roaming client itself. Here I'm gonna enable HTTPS inspection. You're gonna need that root certificate installed on your endpoint so you can use group policy to do that. Now we're gonna go ahead and, and create our security settings for our privileged access workstation. So here we're gonna have malware command and control phishing. We'll go ahead and enable the integrations, but remember on DNS, we also have all those categories and that's our first line of defense. Go ahead and hit save. Next. And here is for content. So there's no block all per se, unless you go in and select all to block. And that's gonna include uncategorized. So even though um, a, a site might not be categorized, you're still not gonna be able to get to it. And essentially at this point, you're not surfing the internet. Now here you got tenant controls as well, that you can go ahead and say, I've got an Office 365 account. I only want you to log into my tenant. That's something I would actually do. I don't have an account to do that, but I would actually allow um, maybe my Office 365 access from, from that particular asset. Again, applications, I'm not doing anything here because we're doing an outright block. And this is where we're gonna get into adding what is allowed. So we'll create a privileged access workstation block destination list, and we'll go ahead and save that. 
And again, if we want to add additional lists for whatever reason um, here, we can do that. We can do that at the domain layer at DNS policy as well. And now we'll go ahead and do that here with allowed. And here I'm going to add an internal segment in, in my environment that I want to be able to access. Maybe I'll add uh, maybe the remote access VPN. And actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna push out the umbrella client um, through VPN in this video as well. So I'll show that. And what I'll do is I'll come back later and we're gonna modify this and probably add cisco.com. So we'll go ahead and hit save here. Go ahead and hit threat grid analysis. Okay, so anything that's proxied now can still do additional inspection. Here I can get very granular on the types of uh, files. Maybe I don't want executables, right? Um, block page list, we'll leave it as existing. Go ahead and hit next. Give it a name and hit save. So now we have our two policies built. We're ready to go. But first, Let's go ahead and look at the privilege access workstation. So one of the things that was mentioned to me is that they use this Microsoft Security Compliance Toolkit. You can go ahead and download that and you're gonna see a bunch of security elements that you can leverage. So, you know, local group policy, you've got things in here around Edge, Windows 10 versions, etc. So. I'm not gonna build out that workstation, but you certainly can come back in there and, and review that and apply it based on Microsoft's best practice. What we are gonna do though, is go back into Umbrella and we're gonna download the org info so we can deploy the Umbrella module using AnyConnect. So all you do is go into roaming clients, go ahead and click that module, it'll download, save it somewhere where we can reference later. And we'll go ahead and build out the configuration on the VPN. Now this is optional. This is if you wanna integrate the Umbrella client with AnyConnect. So we'll go ahead and go to advanced. So we're in our IT group policy. We're gonna to go to AnyConnect client and for optional modules, we're gonna uncheck inherit. And we're gonna go ahead and select the Umbrella roaming, um, um, Umbrella roaming security module. And then here's where we're gonna grab our client profile and more specifically, this is the org info and it's not here because we haven't actually uploaded it yet. So we'll go ahead and hit cancel there. We'll okay here, we might as well apply what we've done at this point. And we'll go ahead to any connect uh, client profile and we'll go ahead and add that org info. So hit add, drop this down, grab the umbrella roaming security profile, give it a name. Now, most likely this is gonna be a name that's the same for anybody that's gonna get Umbrella, but uh, I'm using PA as the um, identifier for me. In this case, we'll go ahead and browse to that org info and we'll upload that file. Now here it's gonna give us an option to grab the group policy that we wanna assign. You can assign to one or more. Here you can assign um, to one as an example. And here I pick sales. That's not the group policy I want but go ahead and hit okay. And what you once you apply this, what you're gonna see is I can't really edit it, right? So what I can do though, is go ahead and click on change group policy. And again, you can have one or more. Let's get rid of sales, go ahead and hit okay, and we'll go ahead and hit apply. So some of the other things that you might wanna consider um, is things like, uh, you know, how do you identify the workstation connecting? So you probably want to do some posturing on top of that. Let's very quickly go back in and check our uh, AnyConnect client. And now we can see that client profiles to download is, is actually assigned to the IT group policy. So that's it. That's all we have to do. I'm Brella the next time we connect, if everything's working properly, let's log in as IT1. Um, we should automatically get pushed the Umbrella module. Now this would be, in this case, our privileged access workstation. So, you know, most likely a very restricted workstation. And we don't want it accessing anywhere on the internet. We don't want it making arbitrary DNS calls to things that it shouldn't do, you know, like a, you know, exploit kit server or phishing site, etc. So you can see fairly quick, 
it's downloaded, it's pushed the roaming security module, that's Umbrella. We're connected to the VPN. We'll go ahead and close this. This will come active very shortly. And there, we're active. So just real quick, you can see some of the settings here. Don't get hung up on this. We haven't actually assigned this asset to a policy. So we'll just, just disconnect real quick. And what we're gonna do is we should see by default the policy at least be enabled from a DNS perspective as well as a web proxy perspective so that's good let's go back to policy now remember earlier i said you may have to come back in and add it if you're using a roaming client so here's our desktop it's still showing unprotected it, that'll change uh, shortly but we got to come back in we'll go ahead and add that identity to our dns policy i've already done this just so you know so i went ahead and add, added that you'll hit set and return and then I'll, then ultimately save this page here. And then we'll go over to web policy and we'll do the same. Go ahead and hit that paw policy. We'll go ahead and hit edit. We'll go roaming computers and we'll just make sure, and again, I've already done this, I've already added it. And we'll go ahead and save this out. Uh, before we do that, let's just go back in. I wanted to add another um, URL here because these are all localized to my network here. So let's go ahead and add www.cisco.com. And we'll go ahead and add that and we'll save it. Set and return. And we'll save that policy. Okay. So everything looks good now. Let's go ahead and let's test the end result. So you can see roaming security is active. It's enabled. You gotta make sure you have that certificate deployed using group policy most likely as a trusted authority. Go ahead and let's try Google and we can see the site is blocked due to content filtering. Look at this one, I even clicked it. It says ntpmsn.com is, is uh, blocked. Now I'm hitting a localized server. So this is my certificate authority. And you can see I can certainly get to it. And let's go ahead and give, let's try the remote access VPN. And that looks good. And we'll go ahead and go to cisco.com. And let's hit downloads. Pretty good, right? Within um, you know, 15 minutes, under 15 minutes, we've got Umbrella and providing both DNS and Umbrella protection for a privileged access workstation.